What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech, and I have a special treat. I got a haircut. Nah, I got a tight X. <laughs> The NVIDIA Titan X Pascal is without a doubt the fastest consumer grade graphics card currently available on the market. The branding causes confusion however, not only in the name but also in its visual similarity to not only the previous Titan X but the current Founders Edition GTX 1080. The price to performance is confusing as well for gamers. Even though NVIDIA has placed it in the GeForce GTX line, which implies gaming, they have stated that it is aimed towards machine learning, but don't worry, I am looking at this card from the PC gaming perspective. The Titan X Pascal features a black shroud over the reference design cooler. At this point, while the cooler design is visually appealing, its performance has not improved over previous generations and still hits serious thermal limitations. The back of the card is graced with a black backplate identical to the Founders Edition line. While it gives the card a nice visual effect, it is unfortunately cheap materials. Nvidia advertises that the temperature limit is 94 degrees Celsius, but the card begins throttling at 84 degrees Celsius unless you manually adjust it in software like Afterburner. To keep temps down and clock stable, you will have to run the fans on a more aggressive fan profile that overpowers the sound coming from my rack mounted server. Well, that's not in a rack. It's just on the floor. It's a good footrest. Display adapters include three DisplayPort 1.4 ports, a single HDMI 2.0B port, and a single DVI. Next we have a 6-pin and 8-pin power adapter sporting a 7 plus 2 power phase drawing a maximum of 250 watts. While the low power requirements for this amount of power is impressive, at this price point, the enthusiast that buys this card is less concerned with power consumption and personally I would prefer not having the limitations that are caused by a relatively weak power phase for a card in this price range. It is also very obviously the second largest limitation to stable boost clocks for the card. Under the hood, the card sports a 1531 MHz boost clock, which we are able to overclock, plus 200 MHz, resulting in the card Card boosting to 2025 MHz, that's 2025 MHz, if you remove the power and thermal limitations with Afterburner. The boost clock communicates over a 384-bit bus with 8GB of GDDR5X at a 10,000MHz effective clock, which I found no FPS gain in when overclocking. All games are benchmarked in 1080p at highest available settings unless those settings are specific to either AMD or Nvidia, for example, Pure Hair in Tomb Raider. I am specifically testing in 1080p because my own personal goal is to be able to play every game at 144 frames per second with max settings. So let's see if the Titan X Pascal can finally do that for me. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, the Titan hit 106.7 frames per second. So unfortunately, $1,200 later and we still aren't meeting my goal in every game. Things get better in Forza Motorsport 6 Apex Beta, which almost hit the magic number, pushing 138 frames per second. Unfortunately, this wasn't very consistent with frequent drops closer to 100. Time Spy Graphics Test 1 scored 100 frames per second, actually 100.99, so I guess we can just say 101 frames per second. Sorry, not 0.69 frames per second this time. And in Time Spy Graphics Test 2, it scored 82.66 frames per second. Hitman did not get the typical 30% boost over the GTX 1080 like the rest of the games, and fell short of my magical number by pulling in 133 frames per second. Doom seems to have hit its limit with the Titan X hitting a consistent and locked 200 frames per second. It didn't seem to ever be able to go past that so I'm assuming that's an engine limitation. I was hitting a wall with Gears of War Ultimate Edition after attempting to perform the upgrade to Windows 10 Anniversary Edition. For whatever reason, it was capping the frame rate at 60 FPS. After a fresh install of Windows and clean drivers from the Anniversary option on the Nvidia website, the Titan X hit a massive 211 11 frames per second. We are there, Batman. 
I don't think that's a word. I don't think that's a thing. Total War Warhammer was giving me the same issue as Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Therefore, we know it's a Windows issue and not a game or hardware problem. Once this was cleared up, it stayed above my magical number with a consistent 151.6 frames per second. In conclusion, while the industrial design choices of the Titan XP are incredibly disappointing, the overall performance for gaming, even at 1080p, shows enough improvement to qualify as bleeding edge. Since we are finally at the point of incredibly high frame rates in the latest AAA titles in 1080p, it may justify a resolution upgrade for some. Personally, I would look at the 1440p range, as 4K still seems to be hit or miss with most AAA titles. It's for this same reason I don't recommend SLI. Let me be clear that this card is not for the masses, the price point makes it unattainable for most and highly impractical for the rest. Thanks for watching, this is Blind Run with Son of a Tech and I will see you next Tuesday. If this graphics card isn't what you're looking for, check out my videos on these other graphics cards or check out my build videos if you're looking at building a PC. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below or leave a comment, that'd be awesome, it helps me out a lot.